Welcome to another Tech Help Quick Queries video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today, we're going to talk about why all the records on your continuous form seem to change, or at least one or more fields do. I'm going to teach you about the hidden relationship mistake that a lot of beginners make that completely breaks your Microsoft Access forms. That plus we got answers to your questions from YouTube and more. Let's get into it. First up, we've got a question from Lydia from Glendale, Arizona, one of my Platinum members. Lydia says, I have an employee table and a manager table. Each employee can be assigned a manager, so I created a form where I can pick a manager for each employee. The problem is that when I update the manager on one employee record, it changes the manager for all employees instead of just that one. What am I doing wrong? Now, Lydia has been through the first couple of my expert classes where we just start learning about relationships. And Lydia, you made one of the most basic uh, relationship mistakes that people make when they start working with multiple tables together. I'm going to show everybody exactly what you did, and uh, hopefully it'll, it'll help someone else out there too. All right, so here I am in my Tech Help free template. This is a free database you can grab off my website if you want to. Now, I don't have employees and managers in here, but I do have customers. So let's pretend that customers represent your employees, okay? It's just a list of people, all right? And let's add a manager table real quick. So create table design, manager ID, that's our auto number, and then a manager name. We'll just put their first and last names together, that's okay. And then hit save. It's just for class purposes, right? Normally I wouldn't do that, but okay. Manager table, primary key, yes, that's our auto number right there. Save it, let's put some data in here. All right, who are our managers? Well, we got uh, we got Karen, she always wants to talk to the manager. And then we got uh, Philip, let's say, I don't know, we got two managers, okay? Save it, close it, all right. As a side note, you could make the same table have both managers and employees in them, just put a is manager checkbox in there. Right, that's called a self-join relationship. That's a lot more advanced though, don't worry about that yet. Now, we need a way to get that manager ID into our customer table so we can pick a manager for each customer. Okay, so right-click, design view. I like to put them all up top. So we're just gonna insert a row up here, a blank row, and stick manager ID in there. That's our number of type long integer, right? That's our foreign key that points to the manager table. Save it, all right? Now, the way I like to get that data in there is I like to put a combo box on the customer form that we could pick a manager with, all right? And I got a whole video on this. I'll give you links to all these videos in a minute. But I'm just gonna come down here. I'm gonna go to form design, find a combo box. There it is right there, drop it down here. Okay, have the combo box get the values from our table or query. Next, we're getting our values from the manager table, next. Bring over both of those fields. We need the ID and the name. Next. What do you want to sort by? Well, manager name, right? Next. That's what the box is going to look like. That's fine. We can make that shorter if you want to, but whatever. And the key column is hidden, right? That number. That number is what we actually care about. Next. We're going to store that value in the manager ID of the customer table, or in your case, the employee table, right? Next, what do you want the label to be? Manager is fine. And there's your box. All right, a little format paint and get that guy black. Okay, so there's our manager. Save it, close it, open it. And now I can pick managers. Karen's my manager, go to the next record, right? Karen's this guy's manager, next record. Let's say this guy's Philip, right? And so on, you pick your managers. Okay, and that's how you pick them. Now that's how I do it. Now, let's get into your problem. Lydia wants to see a continuous form like this with the employees, with the manager listed on here as well. All right, so now we're gonna get rid of, let's get rid of state customer sense and credit limit. Now we're gonna stick the manager there. Now this guy is based on the customer table. And if you look in the customer table, and this is the mistake people make, they look in the customer table and they say, well, you know what? I don't have the manager name in here. I got the manager ID, but I don't want to see that one or that two on here. Right? I don't want to see the manager's name. So here's the next logical step that people think you got to do. They come over here and they make a query 
This is exactly what you did, Lydia, right? Query design, customer and manager. All right, they're joined together, that's fine. Okay, remember your join type because if you don't change your join type, you're not gonna see people who don't have a manager, right? If you bring over all the fields over here in the manager name and you run this query now, you're only gonna see those five records because they're the only ones that have managers. So make sure you change this to an outer join right there. So you see all the records from the customer table, right? Even if they don't have a manager ID. I got a video for that too. I'll give you a link to that in a minute. Okay, but now we have a data set that also has the manager name in it for people who have managers picked. Oh, that's what I wanna see on my form, right? Oh, okay, well, let's save this query. I'll just save it as the manager queue. All right, and now I can take my customer list and I can go into design view and I can change this to that manager queue. And now I can put the manager name on here, right? Okay, so add existing fields. Oh yeah, there's the manager name. Let's bring that over here. Beautiful, I'll just delete the label, stick it up there. Okay, I'll copy this and paste it. Copy and paste, and we'll bring it over here. And that's our manager, okay. Things are looking good so far. Save it, close it, open it, and where's the guys with the man? Oh, there they are, okay. Oh yeah, that looks good. I can see every employee, I can see the, the managers over here, that's fine. Oh, I wanna, now I wanna change someone's manager. All right, I wanna change uh, Richard Ross' manager to Philip. Okay, hit tab, and oh, well, ah, what happened? It changed everybody to Philip. I didn't wanna do that, I just wanna change this guy to Philip. Let's put it back to Karen. Oh, and they all went back to Karen again. Well, that's interesting. Anybody know why that's happening? Pause the video, think about it for a minute. See if you can figure out why that's happening. Did you get it? All right, here's what you're doing. You're not actually changing this record from Karen to Philip. You're changing Karen to Philip. When you bring in two queries like that, or two tables into a query like that, this manager queue, Okay, these are all fields from the customer table. This is a field from the manager table. You're literally changing the record in the manager table. If I come in here and if I change Karen to Joe, notice they all changed to Joe. What you did was you changed Karen to Joe. And that's why if you change it to Philip, it looks like you picked Philip and then everybody else changed to Philip, but that's not what happened. You literally turned Karen into Philip. I could make any number of jokes here, but I'm not gonna. Okay, Karen. Now, what you gotta do is, if you really wanna be able to change the manager on this continuous form, you can. It might, if you're running over a network and you got a lot of users, it might make things slow, but you can make this a combo box, which means you can go back to what you had before. You don't need a query in here. All right, get rid of this, okay? We're gonna go back to having this based right off the customer table. Where are you at? Customer T, there it is right there. Okay, customer T. Now, the customer T only has the manager ID, but that's fine, that's all you need. Because watch, you can go form design, combo box, put a combo box here. All right, look up the values from the table or query. Same, same combo box we made before. In fact, you could steal it right off the other form if you want to. Manager T, bring over both fields. Sort by manager name, All right? That's what it's gonna look like. Store the value in the manager ID of the customer table, right? Next, what label do you want? I'm gonna delete it anyway, so it doesn't matter. And here you go. Now you got a combo box right on that customer list form. And if I open it up, look at that. Now I can change Karen to Philip, and I'm just changing that record. I'm not changing all of them. That's why I always say you should always, well, not always, but you should mostly make your forms based on a single query. And if you do bring in fields from other, from other tables, lock them so that, the, so that that can't happen. Lock this field, right? When you had the other one with just a text box there, so you can't change Karen into Philip, lock it. Go into the properties, right? Take this guy, go to data and say locked is yes on the text box, not on the combo box. 
because then your users can't accidentally change the related records. I see it happen all the time. This is a popular problem that a lot of beginners have when you first start getting into relationships. Okay, try if possible to make your forms based on a single table. And if you have other lookup fields in here, then lock those fields. And a mention to the more advanced users, this is fine for small databases, okay? I try to avoid combo boxes and lookup fields in continuous forms because if you start running this over a network, especially if this list is long, this is really gonna get slow. Especially if you're running over, you know, like the internet, you got SQL server and you're pulling this off the, off the web. The more combo boxes you have, the more lookups you have in here, this is gonna get really, really slow. So try to avoid that if possible. I like to just maybe show the, the item here, right? Like we had before, but to change it, you just gotta open up the single form and make the change here. That's, that's my preferred way to do it. But there's nothing wrong with this on a small database, right? Small network, this is fine. Two, two managers, no big deal, okay? Here's some other videos you can watch for more help with this stuff. Go watch my relationships video. Here's a video on making those relational combo boxes. Here's a good video on those self-join relationships I was talking about earlier. Same thing with genealogy, right? You got people that relate to other people. This way you wouldn't need a separate manager table, right? A person has a father and a mother and each of those are other people. And so the same table just links to itself. Check this out. And don't forget about those outer joins that I mentioned, right? That little relationship there. If you don't do that, you're gonna be missing records on one side or the other. So check that one out too. These are all free videos. They're on my YouTube channel. They're on my website. Go watch those. So Lydia, I hope that answers your question. I hope that helps you. I hope it helps someone else out there. If it helped you, let me know. Post a comment down below. You're why I do this. You're why I do what I do. Uh, let's take a look at another question. Uh, Jack from Hamburg, Germany, along with about five other people have asked me, why aren't you teaching the Monaco SQL editor yet? Uh, bottom line, it's still got some bugs. I like to wait until they've ironed out most of the bugs. And when I stop seeing, you know, bugs being posted in the different forums and the you know, the email threads that I'm in, uh, once I, once it's stable and it's working perfectly and it's been out for like six months without any major issues, I'll start doing videos on it. But until then, uh, I wait. I, I, I like to be, you know, better safe than sorry. I like to teach people stuff that, you know, for business critical databases, I don't jump on new features. I haven't updated my production version of Access uh, in a while. So I, I'm very cautious about stuff like that. But when it's ready, when it's fully cooked, I'll be doing some videos on it. All right, let's head over to the YouTubes. Uh, Krusian Fiber Geek. How come when I open Access, I don't get all the tabs on the ribbon, like Create, Database, I only see Duke and Home. Are you playing the Duke Nukem version of Microsoft Access? <laughs> uh, I do see everything if I hold the Shift button down uh, while it opens. Is this a security setting? The database was set up by someone at least a year before I started using it. I'm learning how to make changes and update as needed. Ah, yes, you just answered your own question, yes. Whoever built that database did some stuff to lock down the ribbon. Um, they set up some security in it. And by holding down that shift key, it bypasses the startup routine. So your main menu doesn't load and whatever other security settings he's got baked into there don't have a chance to run. Okay. Um, you can leave that on there if you want to. Just know that you won't be able to make changes to it unless you do hold down that shift key when you start the database. Here's a video that you can watch that explains a little bit more about the security features, that shift key, how to turn all that stuff on and off. Um, go watch this if you have any other questions. Next up, Boren Bitan says, uh, when you have a larger number of forms and subforms, how can you quickly see the name of the form, especially subforms? Do you have a quick way? Well, I mean, not really. There's no, there's no secret trick to this one. I mean, really, just look in the property sheet. You go into design view and there's the name right there. That's the name of the form. Uh, as far as subforms go, let's see, I got somebody with a subform in here. I think it's the order form. Where are you? Order F. All right, this is a subform down here. Right click, design view. Okay, click on it. That's order detail F. That's the name of it. So that's, I mean, you could put some code in there so it shows up maybe in the caption or, you know, up here. There's lots of ways to do it, but there's no, there's no quick way that I know of, to, you know, while you're in form view to see it. All right, if you're sitting here you could put it in the caption yourself if you want to or if i'm not understanding your question let me know post another question and give me some more details 
Next up, we got Juan Carlos with, uh, hold on, let me hit the translate. Uh, which videos or courses are available in Spanish? Well, I don't speak Spanish myself. Now, now YouTube will sometimes translate some of my videos into Spanish. There's also a new feature in the Edge browser that I did a video on a couple days ago where Edge can now live translate the audio. So you'll hear me speaking in Spanish. Well, that's not really me. It's a computerized voice, but you get the point. So use the Edge browser and then you can watch any of the videos on my website in Spanish, which is pretty cool. I, I'm not sure about how YouTube's handling that, but uh, I think that's pretty neat. Atlantic X100 asks, does the two gigabyte file size limit exist? Oh yes, oh, it exists, it's very real. In fact, I suggest uh, not letting your access uh, backend file get over 1.5 gigabytes because uh, some temporary table writes, a big query, any of that can cause your database to balloon over two gigabytes and that's a hard limit, you, you will crash. You'll run into, hey, I can't do anything about this errors. Uh, but remember, you can split your database into multiple backend files, so really you can only have one table that hits that limit. Um, I, got, I got several whole videos on this subject, so search my website for them, and uh, here's one of the more popular ones, so check it out. All right, folks, that's gonna do it for another Quick Queries. Hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. Enjoy your weekend. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button right now and give me a like. Also, be sure to subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. And make sure you click that bell icon and select all to receive notifications whenever I post a new video. Do you need help with your Microsoft Access project? Whether you need a tutor, a consultant, or a developer to build something for you, check out my Access Developer Network. It's a directory I put together personally of Access experts who can help with your project. Visit my website to learn more. Any links or other resources that I mentioned in the video can be found in the description text below the video. Just click on that show more link right there. YouTube's pretty good about hiding that, but it's there. Just look for it. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, tables, all that stuff. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? And if you like level one, level two is just $1. That's it. And it's free for members of my YouTube channel at any level. Speaking of memberships, if you're interested in joining my channel, you get all kinds of awesome perks. Silver members get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, and there's hundreds of them by now. They also get one free beginner class each month, and yes, those are from my full courses. Gold members get the previous perks, plus access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos. Plus you get access to my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions and all kinds of source code that I use. And gold members get one free expert class every month after completing the beginner series. Platinum members get all of the previous perks, plus they get all of my beginner courses, all of them from every subject, and you get one free advanced or developer class every month after finishing the expert series. And you can become a diamond sponsor and have your name listed on the sponsor page on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time.